welcome you all to the second day of the event, School on Systems and Control. Now, our first talk will be on Modeling and Control Design Example by Dr. Abraham T. Matthew. As mentioned yesterday, he is serving as Professor in Department of Electrical Engineering, NIT Calicut. We are extremely glad to have you here for the talk, sir. I welcome you, sir, for the talk. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, all of you. I think being the second day, we are uh, more comfortably placed. Hospitality is good. The environment is also good. Except for the 10 minutes delay today, everything is fine. So we will start now. And uh, today, what I would like to uh, share with you is the extract from the three, four works we have been doing with a long or rather uh, some amount of learning from IIT Kanpur and IIT Bombay and IIT Delhi as well. So yesterday when I was uh, presenting, I told about the uh, abstraction of the control problem. We need to define the system boundary, the inputs and the output and then the environment. Then. Uh, the control system, according to my perspective, is a theory which works like a, uh, what you can say, the overbridge, sorry, the approach road to the bridge. Approach road means the bridge is there, the road is there, but unless the approach road is there, the bridge will not become usable. So the theory of control is something kind of a bridging between the domains. So when we look at that, with that perspective, we find a control problem existing in different domains. So I would, uh, I am associated with three, four uh, PhD works which are uh, different in different field. I would go through that one by one and you find that uh, the control system is to be identified in that with a control requirement or a performance requirement and then we design the control strategy and then we develop the control uh, method and algorithm and then uh, implement that. And also, one thing what we have to find or understand is that to understand this problem, we not only need the calculus, the algebra, or the mathematics associated with the control theory, we would also need to know the other domains of specializations or other domains of knowledge. Just for example, if you want to design a controller for a DC motor, we need to know the power electronics as well as the machine dynamics. Similarly, if we know whatever subject, we can find an application in control. One example is the data structures and algorithm <laughs> analysis or algorithm design. This is purely a computer science course. I, uh, I am teaching that for the undergraduates in my institution as an elective. But when I uh, handle that subject, I find application for that data structures and complexity in control systems. Because data structures actually organization of data. So then the data is organized properly on the uh, memory Handling of the data or computation becomes easier. So reducing the computing time is a requirement in control implementation. So that one uh, will help us. That knowledge will help us to understand the requirement in the control the, uh, technology. Then another one is uh, complexity, algorithm complexity. When we talk about PA control or PID control, the order of the computation is different. So where to implement? and how to implement or what, is there any way of better implementing the algorithm on the hardware with lesser amount of hardware complexity or the memory complexity or com time complexity that we can understand or analyze that problem with the knowledge in data structures which is totally a, an independent subject from the uh, domain of computer science. Similarly, we find the uh, uh, one another subject is uh, generalized theory of electrical machines. 
which we find in the control design for electrical machines. So, generalized theory of electrical machines or dynamics of electrical machines is actually a theory which will represent a rotating machine in the form of a circuit or the other we can say an equivalent circuit. So, that when we combine with the power electronic circuits will give a mathematical model uh, which is now the control system. Then we can analyze that and then uh, do the uh, so called control designs. So, the knowledge in the uh, other disciplines will help us to understand the problem rather better. This is the introduction and then uh, to begin with I will uh, present one example that is the wheeled mobile robot. Yesterday I pa men made a passing mention. Before that I would just may introduce the robust control designs some uh, clue about that in the multivariable framework. So, when uh, this one is familiar the state space notation we have x dot equal to x plus b u and y equal to c x plus d u and what is this d standing for? Direct connection between the input and the output y u and y. Had d be not there what would be the uh, condition? If d is there what is the condition? If d is 0 what is the condition? of properness of the resulting matrix transfer function. If d is there the, whole tran the uh, transformation to the frequency domain or you can say matrix transfer function will be proper, proper transfer function and d is equal to 0 means we will get strictly proper transfer function. So, when we have a model of this kind the presence of D or absence of D will help us to understand the type of solution that we can prescribe. So, the, the H 2 L 2 pro formulation will need strictly proper requirement for the transfer functions and H infinity uh, problem formulation would allow proper, proper transfer. So, if D is present then we have to go for H infinity and if D is not there we can perhaps think about H 2 optimization method. Both are modifications of the uh, optimization now uh, LQR optimization. Then I have this problem where the state matrix is expressed in an interval form. The state matrix has a minimum and a maximum. Every element is maybe max the worst case all the elements are subjected to uncertainty at least some of them could be at an interval. So, I can write this as a interval matrix and then there are there may not be straightforward method to handle this kind of a uh, uncertainty for multivariable case. So, what we do is we convert it into a matrix transfer function by considering the nominal model we find the mean of these two and take that that is the mean value of the state matrix and then convert this into a transfer function matrix or a matrix transfer function uh, to start with. And in the robust control design the uh, control design switch between the frequency domain and the time domain. For finalizing the norm we go to the frequency domain and for optimization we go to the time domain. So, the MATLAB algorithms are mostly formulated using the state space model. So, we have to use the state space model in running the program on the computers, but to check whether the optimality is reached or not to compute the norm we have to come back to the frequency domain. And there are built in solution the functions in MATLAB to convert uh, state space to uh, uh, the uh, transfer function form and transfer function form back to the state space form. Like what we have uh, seen yesterday, once we use the transfer function from the state space, all the controllability observability issue will be 
removed and what we get is a system which will be implicitly controllable and observable. So, if we go back from the GS to the state space form, we may not be getting the same state space model. So, the internal stability requirement need to be fixed first of all, so that this transformation becomes invariant. Okay. Invariant in the sense that you will have the same more or less same state space model exists for the GS. If this state space model is not fully controllable and fully observable, the GS will not, GS will be a minimal uh, model, but if we go back from GS to the state space model, we will not get the original state space model. So, that problem will happen. Now, <coughs> from the multivariable point, the problem, <coughs> sorry, the problem it depends on the control scheme we select. So, here we take that there is a forward controller, there is a plant and then the plant uncertainty. So, this is additive uncertainty. And to formulate the problem, we have to modify that into a particular of this kind, where the uncertainty will be taken out as a block and the remaining one will come as this block. So, that you can uh, do by identifying two signals u and d here for the time being. So, u is the output from here and uh, d is coming as input to this side. And then so, this is the output and this is the input. So, the transfer function between u and d, if you find that will be given by this. Okay. And then the input u goes to this form and this output will come to this form. So, this is a kind of a reduction of the uncertainty problem to apply the small gain theorem and then develop the controller. So, this k has to be a stabilizing controller if g is unstable. So, if we take that g is nominally stable, then the k can be stable and then we can find the bound for the uh, k matrix to satisfy this uh, uncertainty bound. Similarly, if we go with the multiplicative uncertainty, we can separate out the uncertainty from the remaining plant and then form a kind of a feedback loop this way by considering one output u here and another input d here and then we get the met the model here and you can find that the block below will be now g k by 1 plus g k inverse and you can uh, find that this is the complementary sensitivity function and uh, the previous one was not the sensitivity function, but this was having a k here and people have given a name for this one, it is control sensitivity function. k by 1 plus uh, k into i plus g k inverse is uh, called the control sensitivity function. Now, the small gain theorem is because of James in 1966, by which uh, he uh, asserted that we have a system of this kind with the two inputs here and the two outputs here and two out outputs E 1 and E 2 here. So, this system whatever channel we take from R 1 to E 1 or R 1 to Y 1 or R 2 to E 2 or R 2 to Y 2 or even any combination we take, we find an input output channel and the closed loop system is input output stable if the product of the gains is less than 1. The gains means you use the h infinity norm of this s 1 and s 2 and we multiply that gain and if that gain is less than 1, then the, the system is input output stable for all the possible combinations of input output path. And uh, this one is to be satisfied for the general system whether linear or nonlinear and this is the condition for the linear uh, system. The norm of the product of S1 and S2 should be less than 1. And if we use that, we have delta G here 
we take that the perturbation is a stable uh, uh, matrix function and this one is also stable with the proper selection of k. So, that means, we have the loop gain h is equal to r into delta g that is minus k in y plus g k inverse into delta g. So, for stability of this system, the condition is that r into delta g infinity should be less than the product of the two norms. So, this means, we can put a bound on this delta g. So, that the stability limit we can put. So, that is delta g is taken as less than or equal to 1 by alpha, where the uh, if we put this one here, then we need r the norm of r should be less than alpha. So, this condition arises. So, now to alpha is one the reciprocal of this 1 by alpha. So, 1 by alpha is this is just for convenience delta g if we put alpha then we have to write 1 by alpha here. So, if we put delta g less than 1 by alpha means we can put alpha here. So, this for convenience of notation it is used like that. Then uh, the this kind of a formulation helps us in uh, uh, formulating that Doyle theorem what we have seen yesterday. So, this one is the requirement. Now, we have two way one way is to analyze the stability for a given controller. So, we check whether this condition is satisfied or not for an arbitrary value of alpha. The second condition is that for a given value of alpha we will be able to synthesize a controller. So, we choose a g and we fix an alpha and then use this method and uh, develop with this into an optimization problem and find a value of k by proper formulation. So, that uh, we get a controller which will satisfy this norm condition. So, that is the synthesis of the controller. Then in that process if for any arbitrary value of alpha if that controller does not exist then you can say that this method will not render a solution for the problem. Then the same one we apply the small gain theorem we apply to the multiplicative uncertainty. So, we have to know what we have to note is that uh, we have first for deduce the problem into the small gain uh, feedback problem or you can say the matrix uh, what is that L of t. So, the loop gain here is t into delta g and uh, we put a limit the boundary delta g it is 1 by beta, beta is another arbitrary uh, parameter. So, this one we need uh, that t infinity should be less than beta. So, this will put a condition on the complementary sensitivity function or in the structure what we have as uh, seen this is the forward uh, transfer function from the input to the output reference to the output. So, this now less than uh, beta that will become as the condition for stability. Again we can go in the two directions one is of analysis or one the other is of synthesis by for uh, the system design. So, to go in that direction there is uh, in the robust control literature people start with the formation of an augmented plant. Augmented plant means these are the this is a vector of variables which are to be minimized in the control design may be the disturbance uh, effect of disturbance, the effect of noise, the tracking error, the effect of modeling uh, error or the uncertainty all these are the responses coming as an element in this vector z and this w are exogenous inputs the reference input or the noise or the disturbance the input to the disturbance uh, part all this will come as vector here in w and u is a control signal that will go into the plant generated from the output that can be measured. So, the output that can be measured will be measured using the appropriate uh, technique and then that will be fed through the controller. So, that controller will generate the control u and it will go into the system 
and in uh, the if we want to combine that with the uncertainty we will have another block that is of the uncertainty block coming parallel to this one on the other side then the problem formulation will become slightly different and now the g system matrix we take that this is a symmetric uh, matrix g11 g12 g not symmetric but it can be uh, divided into this form with the g22 or g11 inverse would be existing then we have z and y so this is not the original system transfer function this is an augmented one the dimension will be much uh, different than the original plant so here we use this u equal to ky and then we multiply z equal to g11 w plus g12 u and y is equal to g21 w plus g22 u that multiplication we take and we substitute u equal to ky and then uh, eliminate u and y to connect z to w because w is the exogenous input and z is the desired uh, the, the output which has to be minimized so this total gain has to be minimized so that this gain will become uh, minimal or this gain will have to be uh, less than 1 for stability requirement so we get g11 plus g12 into k this deduction from that transformation and this is called the low the linear fractional transformation of the uh, augmented plant and then the requirement is that we have to find a k which is stabilizing the total system but it will have the norm norm is it by norm w and that will be the minimum of the norm of mk where mk is this uh, term and the matlab computations would need this is x dot not x x dot equal to x plus b1 this is the form of the state space representation needed for giving input to the matlab program so the original problem had to be made in this form so we have to identify a b1 b2 c1 c2 etc and now if we apply the controllability stability uh, conditions what are the pairs required to be controllable or stabilizable what are the pairs to be controllable or stabilizable what are the pairs to be observable or detectable so here in the x dot equal to x plus uh, b1 this one so this is the u which will be replaced by the state feedback so a b2 should be controllable or stabilizable and then you find that there is a connection y to c to x so a c2 has to be observable or detectable so we uh, one of my student recently had used this one in the wheel mobile robot which is a modification of the work previously done by the research scholar so we call this as the differentially driven mobile robot because it has only one pair of wheel by two independent motors so the forward movement or sideways movement are by the control of the two motors connected to the two wheels so if you have to move forward both wheel will will rotate in the same speed and if it has to turn right one wheel will retard and other will accelerate so something what we use in the tank so if in that is used that uh, problem we have articulated just for uh, creating a control problem where we find that there is something interesting there this uh, differential ro driven mobile robot is uh, not anything new there is a robo soccer game being uh, played which is very popular in korea and uh, singapore where the initial team of robots were using this wheeled mobile robot now this still is 
the problem is still valid. People use the different uh, types and different shapes and different uh, capacities of wheel mobile robot for uh, different purposes. So in that uh, pursuit, we articulated one problem where the robot will be, uh, wheel mobile robot will be connected as a chain to move. So that problem we are now doing. And interestingly, when we started making this one, making this robot with all hardware on it to take the command and then to drive the wheel, we find that there is a communication delay and there is a computational delay that affect the uh, total response. So even if we ask, uh, we give a command to move forward, the actual moving forward action will happen only after some time. So the calculation had to be done in the hardware, the signal has to be generated, and then it had to be applied to the wheel. So we find that there is a delay. So if we keep on giving the command, and if the command is uh, stored on board and the actions are uh, initiated one after the other, the result could be something unfavorable. So the command should be accepted by the system only in such a way that the action for one command and action for the second command are not in conflict. So there is a problem of time delay and stability in the control of mobile robot that uh, we have taken up and uh, we are examining it uh, separately. So in the case of this uh, tractor trailer movement, which we have considered, we have, when we looked at the literature, the normal tractor trailer, we find a gas uh, tanker or the big trailer which carry the uh, newly built car or the other vehicles. There is a tractor part and a trailer part. This problem is extensively studied by the people. Why? Because there are certain issues which are typical to that tractor trailer, what we call as the jackknifing. Jackknifing means the tractor has gone into a larger angle that any effort by the tractor will not pull the trailer, nor it will pull the trailer to the sideways. So the turning of the tractor trailer assembly should be in the angular turn should be in such a way that the trajectory will be maintained by both the tractor as well as trailer. Otherwise, there is a possibility of this one or a possibility of overturning by the trailer. So this gas tranger uh, tilting or you can say the accident quite often happens because the driver takes it fast and all of a sudden he will turn the steering. The balance is lost so the vehicle will become uh, unstable. So this is one problem. And the, the other one is that so these are the uh, references what we have used. So this one here, this is the symbolic form. So we have uh, one coordinate which is inertial coordinate and uh, another is a body reference coordinate. So there is a transformation needed between the two coordinates to locate the uh, robot. So once we start moving, if we want to have a path followed by the robot, then we have to have a reference. So this uh, transformation will be needed if the tracking is not done by a visual servoing or a, a field sensor. If we have a visual servo, that servo can identify the path. If the path has got something fitted on that a reflector, then the uh, visual uh, sensor could identify the path and then correct it. Otherwise, we need to have a trans blind or you can say inertial navigation that is used in the satellite. So this problem is formulated in such a way that there is no sensor on board. So the guidance is inertial. So we have uh, the transformation matrix to transform the two coordinate and then uh, 
we have two vectors this way. So, we have the, uh, the co transformation between the terrestrial coordinate and the body coordinate. And then uh, we bring in the kinematic constraint that there is no uh, lateral slip uh, that uh, Dr. Potluri has mentioned yesterday. So, this one, this one is equal to 0, there is another constraint and then the pure rolling constant constraint that is that the vehicle is uh, completely touching the ground and then rolling. And then from that we formulate a con kinematic constraint uh, equation of this form. Then the kinematic model will be modified slightly and then we look at the dynamic model by borrowing the uh, model of multilinked robot. So, we have the uh, equation just like what we have in the multilinked robot. And then the uh, first one what uh, the boy has done was to apply the input to state linearization by assuming the, uh, the uh, so called the dynam optimization problem and then uh, considering the kinetic energy of that sort total system and then uh, using the Lagrangian he formulated that equation this way and then uh, converted that into a input to state linearization problem and you find the different steps here. and you can find that the transformation uh, theta is coming here. So, this one is the nonlinearity is coming in the system, because of which he had to use the uh, different method and he had tried backstepping method as well. So, this is one scheme where you find the different blocks other than what we find the g x or the p d. This is for the so called the modifications to accommodate the nonlinearity. But the, the actual problem was to consider the tractor with uh, two trailers. So, this way, so when the tractor was connected with two more, the total problem of tracking of the path by all the three when it is formulated, it was difficult to apply the feedback linearization or the backstepping method. So, uh, we uh, thought of using the Rowes control method by developing a nominal model for the plant and then assuming a bound for the uncertainty to cast the problem as a robust control problem. So, we consider the tractor part, which is the ankle here and then the trailer part. So, we find that there is a component here, which is not here. So, the trailer 1 is or trailer 2 for that matter is not having any control term. So, control term is only here, which uh, consider the rate of angular movement. So, this is these two are dumb, this is active. Then we go by a step by step and uh, formulate this matrix. Then we have to linearize it and then substitute the numerical values of the coefficients to get the so called uh, linear time invariant model for the robot, which is the nominal model. So, this is the nominal parameters by substituting the various nominal values. And then we consider the uncertainty model here. So, the there is the perturbation coming in. So, this is taken as a disturbance at the input side and this is the nominal plant. And then uh, the input disturbance is actually the measurement noise effect. So, then the bound was uh, calculated then this is again a hit and trial method and you can see that this is a diagonal matrix. So, this is the term which will multiply the 
identity matrix i r r and then it will be converted into its equivalent uh, uh, matrix transfer function form and similarly w p another weighting matrix is another uh, identity matrix multiplied by this weighting uh, term. So, here it is proper and here it is strictly proper. So, this requirement had to be there on this weighting functions and correspondingly we get this term. And then th these are transformed to the original problem what we have uh, seen as earlier. So, these are the coefficient matrices to be formed and then uh, we take this uh, feedback structure and then finally, come to the equation where the k will be coming in here and then use the d k iteration method what is there in the MATLAB toolbox to solve this problem to find a value for k for the given values of p 1. So, this much of transformation need to be done and then use the software to find the value of k. Once k is determined this d k iteration method you can uh, choose the limit of the convergence limit and then uh, find whether k exists or not. Once we get the k we go back and then uh, from this we have to separate out the k matrix and then put it in the simulations to find the uh, response of the closed loop system. So, this much is step is involved in that uh, process of modeling. And similarly, he has extended that to the same method because in the previous PhD work what we are doing was the, uh, the use of LMI, but here he has used the touch infinity optimization method. So, here in the second case what happened was that The second trailer was having a control. So, there is additional term of velocity coming in the second uh, trailer model. So, then again the problem was uh, transformed to the robust optimization problem and then finally, we got this answer of this kind. And uh, we can find that when uh, the trailer was uh, passive. So, there was an error 1.2 when the trailer 1 was active the error was reduced. Similarly, for a sinusoidal input also when the trailer 1 was passive there was an error. So, that error was reduced in the case when the trailer 1 was given a control uh, action on it. So, this is the uh, inference what we made. And the second is uh, robust control design using the LMI. This is a method, method of uh, robust design and you can read this sentence. This is an extraction from a PhD thesis. Any guess? More than a hundred year old uh, thesis. So, the Lyapunov method we use in the optimization or robust control uh, in various uh, forms and uh, contexts. So, for facilitating the solution people have developed a method called the linear matrix uh, inequality. There are some solutions on available LMI solvers are available uh, not only in MATLAB in other independent uh, software products also these LMI solvers available. So, the LMI problem is that we if we have the uh, original problem considered by uh, Lyapunov d x by d t equal to a x t. So, if this is the autonomous uh, system this will be stable if A has got all the eigenvalues in the left of plane, but that is also satisfied by the existence of a 
P matrix so that A transpose P plus P A less than 0. So the uh, derivative V dot X will become negative definite. This is the problem we know. The, this is the condition for negative definite uh, P uh, V dot. So this is actually the problem of matrix inequality. We have A matrix here and a P matrix. The requirement of A transpose P plus P A is what? Is it that it should be uh, symmetric? It should be symmetric. Then only you can talk about the definiteness. Then only we can talk about the definiteness. If it is to be definite, means to simplify the explanation, we need it to be symmetric. So this A transpose P plus P A should be symmetric. So that requirement is formulated as a problem called the LMI problem. So there is a matrix function given f x equal to f 0 plus f 1 x 1 etc. So these x 1 x 2 are the decision variables and f 1 are the symmetric matrices. So the sum will also become a symmetric matrix. So we can uh, say that about the sign definiteness f x less than 0 or f x greater than 0. So these two becomes two different uh, LMI problem. One is less than 0, other is greater than 0. So in one case we use this, mostly in control we use this method, but in uh, there are other cases where this uh, will be in a game theory conditions, we use f x greater than 0 to maximize the profit or gain of the game. And there is another uh, operation, mathematical operation that associated with that called the Scher complement. So if we have a matrix M, which can be separated as 4, M1, M2, M11, M12, etc. And then this M11 ha is non-singular and M22 is also non-singular and these are symmetric matrices. So that means we can use a transformation using a transform what you call the congruent transformation of matrices. And then uh, we can say that for this one to be negative definite, that means m, m less than 0, means it is sufficient to have m11 less than 0 and which implies that we can have m11 less or m11 s 0, this is a diagonal matrix that should be less than 0, or which will say that m11 less than 0, s less than 0, that means we can have an S which is of this kind using the transformation and we find that M11 and what we have is M11 inverse M22 and M12, M21. So this S is called the Scher complement of M11 in M. Similarly, for M22 also we can find a Scher complement where you will find M22 inverse here in the previous one M11 inverse was here, here M22 was there. So these are now the Scher complement. Uh, so M2 and S both should be less than 0 for that the total M to be negative definite. So this is the mathematics involved in that. So these are the two transformation matrices to find the two uh, Scher complement. Where? Here. Here. No, no. Here, what is actually the first thing is that this is this is there, m less than zero. M less than zero is there, that is implied. So that means m11 less than zero is necessary. So the steps involved are form again the same steps you can say the formulate the control design problem and then formulate it into LMI form then apply the LMI solver.
So just uh, to take that LQR problem, we have this is the Riccati equation coming out of the substitution of use assuming a Lyapunov function x transpose v x and then finding v dot x and then substituting this we finally get the uh, Riccati inequality. So, this is now converted into an LMI problem by identifying m 1 1, m 1 2, m 2 2 here. So, m 2 1 will be transpose of m 1 2. So, this way we formulate the LMI for the LQR problem as having four blocks, one block will be this one and other block this and this is the R matrix. So, this way we uh, formulate or convert the LQR optimization problem into an LMI problem. And uh, this can be written in the both ways using the share complement uh, thing. So, we uh, looked at a problem where we have uh, a delay here and one person had taken up that work. So, the problem was formulated as x dot equal to x plus b w v 1 u t and a d x minus. So, there is a delay term coming here. So, otherwise this output is c x t and then So, we have taken uh, the Lyapunov function this way to uh, accommodate the delay term here and then uh, formulate a term v dot x that is this one and then a uh, little bit of uh, manipulations. Would finally give the so called LMI equation and there the unknown is uh, the x matrix which need to be determined and from that we have to take out the controller term. So, that was the example. And then uh, the we will uh, have 10 minutes more or 20 minutes more now. And the next problem is uh, network control system. It is a typical case where uh, there are two issues coming. One is the quality of service and the quality of control. Quality of service means it is a term associated with the computer networks or multimedia over the network, where we consider the uh, network quality and the quality of control means the control uh, result of control should be satisfactory for the stakeholder. So, this is uh, people are doing their research. So, we learned something from IIT Kanpur on network control system and then uh, we are now working on one of some of our people are working on building uh, automation. So, the assumption is that there is a big building big building like a shopping complex or entertainment center or a software development house or an exhibition hall, which is a very big, very big uh, area where uh, human, uh, Ill, human occupant is the major source of heat. And then uh, unlike the factory setup. So, the comfort of the human occupant is critical, the energy usage is critical to from the possible point of uh, cost of operation, then the sh we may need to schedule that uh, heating cooling uh, things. Then the lighting system need to be economically used depending on the occupancy rate. And then to control all these systems, we can use the wireless network to use the technology of the day and to find how best it can be used. So, 
when we use the wireless network for control purposes, network availability and reliability will be issues. So there is a quality uh, QoS associated with the communication part, and there is a QoC associated with the comfort level to be guaranteed. So this becomes a multi-objective uh, problem. And then uh, we have flexibility in using the protocol of communication depending on the data transfer we need. Then the battery, the wireless sensors have to be wireless to make it flexible, the topology to be flexible. So then the connections will be wireless connection and the battery will be on board that sensor. So the life of the battery is one issue. So that it has to be conserved. Then, uh, so that problem is converted into a control problem by looking at the wireless network, which is a communication between the plant. So we have the actuator here, sensor here, which are associated with the plant. Then the wireless network, the controllers are elsewhere. The controller is elsewhere. The plant is elsewhere. The actuator and sensors are obviously have to be associated with the plant because the data is originating from the plant. The actuator is to act on the plant. So the actuator and sensor cannot be away from the plant. So what we can have is a, uh, the channel for communication between the sensor and the actuator through the controller. So there is a link here, there is a link uh, here. So the reliability of the link is one issue. Time delay is one issue. The packet uh, drop uh, is one issue. The fading of the channel is another issue, if there is a possibility of channel fading happening. So there are multiple issues associated with the control now, which are uh, to be borrowed from the communication uh, technology. So what the, the we are now doing is to divide the whole uh, building into different zones. And depending on the occupancy of the zone, we will ass, uh, assign priority for the different zones. And then uh, develop some mathematical model for communication as well as the control. And then look at the uh, profitability from that. So there is a fussy part coming in, there is an optimization part coming in, and uh, the zones of sensors and actuators are coming through this part. Okay, so there is a QIS associated here and QIS associated here, and the whole system feedback when it is considered, there is a quality of control issue coming. So we have uh, some learning here because in the uh, electrical department of IIT Kanbu, there is a group working on the network control system. And uh, I'll take a few more minutes to tell about one more problem that is coordination control in uh, for microgrid. When the order of the controller is higher, obviously the band, oh, yeah, yeah, obviously the bandwidth will be higher, right? So then, uh, what uh, we find, uh, we also have the same issue. Start uh, three, four years back, it's, we started working on it. And when we uh, first one was an aerospace uh, something, uh, uh, jet propulsion uh, model, we have taken and uh, did this. So the Planned was 9th order, the controller was uh, around 30th order or 28th order. So then, uh, obviously, there is a dilemma to use the higher order. So we, what we did was that we reduced the mod model order and then tried it. Yeah. 
every method has its own limitations every method has its own limitations no we don't have we we don't have we are in the process of early because iit kanpur has a history of uh, 60 years of research we have only a, a history of 10 years of research so oh, we are in the process of building that uh, maybe after 2 years when i come back probably i will have some examples to tell you okay so we are in the process of development uh, now so theoretical in the simulation level what you have told has uh, come to us and uh, we have experienced that yeah 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 that is true that is true so in that case i interacted with uh, some of the people in isro how they deal with the control problem and the implementation is of the higher order they say that they can handle even in the microprocessor implementation they can handle up to 30th order or something uh, programming they can do for the on board uh, systems for control so that much order implementation is not an issue but uh, whether the plan plus controller uh, will match or not that is the issue what we can hope is that if the higher order controller means bandwidth is higher so the plant is of lower order means band bandwidth is low so when it is put together plant uh, limitation of bandwidth of the plant will dominate so the controller will automatically become uh, inactive or the higher order dynamics of the controller will not be able to uh, influence the plant that can uh, that is the uh, intuitive uh, reasoning we can give thank you so this one is uh, coordination control of microgrid where in uh, i am a co guide for that uh, research work so the problem is that uh, the microgrid is having small inertia unlike the large interconnected system there is no spinning reserve associated with that the storage is costly and uh, there is large scale uncertainty associated with the source because we don't know when the solar will be there when the wind will be there so there is large scale uncertainty and then the user satisfaction is of prime uh, importance in up we have power only for 6 hours or 7 hours of day in kerala we don't have a power cut at all so if we look at the satisfaction level of a kerala man coming to up it is very uh, low okay so if we keep the satisfaction of level of the user as the prime concern then we cannot allow for any power cut or load uh, shedding so that is the one then the profitability of in the context of uh, deregulation the profitability is uh, something which uh, we people will keep in mind so with this uh, we have to uh, model the microgrid as a control problem and uh, maximize the satisfaction and the profitability by minimizing the uh, cost looking at the uncertainties associated with the sources so there are different uh, modeling possible for that so we just started with that and maybe after some time we will be able to share some of our results with you so i think uh, it uh, now we'll close here if we have some points to discuss we will discuss i'll show one uh, whatever we have done in this so the problem is formulated as uh, something this kind we borrowed this diagram from somebody else so there are different sources and the load in a geographically limited area and there are storages there are inverters so one uh, structure uh, for control was hierarchical control so you have a supervisor uh, level and uh, you have the different microgrids coming and the uh, different sources coming in so there is a control uh, the coordination of the microgrid to serve a larger area but when it comes to the lower microgrid there is uh, the coordination problem or sharing of the source output comes in 
So this is how we formulated the objectives for that and then uh, just following this way and uh, we have uh, got one uh, two project for this. So there is an optimization, mul different constraints will come inside the, the formulation and uh, we they started with the uh, PSO method or the particle sum optimization then got some result, but now we are going into uh, even trying about the modeling in terms of the robust control. Okay, so thank you very much.